Well, as you know, uh, here we are with the public hearing for the budget. The public hearing was set some months ago. Um, and this is the date for the public hearing on the budget that we've been working on for quite a while. So I've revised the PowerPoint presentation as this is the first time that uh, ex unless you attended uh, any of the public attended the, the uh, public workshop or the council's public work sessions. Um, we'll go through this very quickly uh, an overview. Okay, the first, and I won't go through all of these, these are the FY 2011 goals. These are the goals that the council set up in 19, or excuse me, 1910, 2010 <laughs> uh, for our uh, FY 2011 budget. That's which we're currently in. FY 2011, of course, starting on sep or October 1st of 2010 and will end on September 30th of this year. So... And of course, the and this is fairly small. Council had a lot of goals this year, so these were the goals that the council worked on in March of 2011, which we used to uh, build, if you will, the 2012 budget. The 2012 budget, of course, will take effect October 1st of 2011 and run through September 30th, uh, 2012. So budget overview, um, of course, the process begins, and I should have changed. It's actually closer to a six-month process, but it starts with city staff reviewing uh, council goals and looking at budgets and where we are financially throughout the year. Uh, of course, as you know, active management of the budget resulted in a 3% holdback. Uh, from the FY 2011 budget, and that's been going on. Estimates are made, revenues are estimated, and we prepare the budgets for uh, presentation to Mayor Cheney. Uh, then the mayor oversees the next section of the operation, along with Don Palmer, uh, the finance director, and myself. And then finally, a draft budget is put together. It's distributed to council, as it was in this case, the third week of June. <coughs> closer to the fourth week of June. And then we had our first council workshop on July 25th. And then we had our uh, second council workshop on August 8th. It incorporates, of course, the goals that we just saw and uh, the strategic objectives of the city. So the overview, uh, trends and comparison highlights and departmental highlights. Uh, again, you saw this during our budget workshops. This is the breakup of property taxes levied on city <clears throat> residents. So of every dollar that a city resident pays in property taxes, it is broken up and levied by these taxing entities in the percentages that you see. As you see, the city's percentage is 24.1%. We also have a voter-approved bond at 3.1%, the county at 247 the school at 367 That would be school district 281. Uh, library and highway district are our taxing entities. Uh, by the way, those are also the levels of appropriation that you see in your budget books. Okay, these are the average city levies, uh, 40 select cities throughout the state of Idaho. The average, as you can see, is $6.52. The city of Moscow's levy is $4.02. That's per thousand of assessed valuation. Uh, so as you can see, the residents of the city of Moscow are um, have a very, um, I guess, uh, reasonable levy as compared to other cities in the state. Uh, one of the things that does happen in the city is uh, we have quite a bit of tax-exempt property. If you look at the taxable value uh, there under the taxable value column, it's about a billion two hundred or two million in uh, assessed or ad valorem uh, value in the city, and that is what uh, our property taxes are levied upon. And then if you look over here. On this column, these are tax-exempt entities, of which the City of Moscow is one, University of Idaho, Latok County, and Moscow School District. As you can see, the estimated portion of non-taxable value, and we, we get this by calling up these entities and asking them what, they're, the, what they insure for their property values, comes out to $1.1 billion. So uh, taxable values in Moscow are actually a less than, I think, exempt values based upon this. And this does not include some very large uh, property holders such as Gritman Medical Center, churches, other nonprofits in the city. Uh, about at, these numbers are about 53% of the city's valuation, I believe, is not taxable. 
Okay, levy rates of our three largest taxing entities in Latok County. Uh, the green represents the city of Moscow, blue, school district 281, and the uh, yellow color is Latok County. Uh, so you can see that uh, over the years that it has adjusted quite a bit. Uh, 2006, as you know, was adjusted when the state legislature gave some property tax relief uh, for school district levies and then uh, assessed a, or apportioned a penny of the property tax to school districts. So Sa Sales tax. Sales tax. I'm sorry. Thank you. And you can see that same thing when you're talking about school districts. Here's Nez Perce County. You can see that same dip in 2006. Uh, of course, again, city, school district, and county. So that's how we compare to Nez Perce County. Kootenai County, the same thing. You see that same dip in 2006 for the school district. And then, of course, your uh, three largest taxing entities. Full-time equivalents wanted to point out that the city of Moscow is very efficient. After these numbers are adjusted for paid fire departments, cemetery, and library, among others, uh, the city of Moscow uh, has 5.7 employees per 1,000 residents as compared to our closest competitor, if you will, in the region, which would be Coeur d'Alene at 5.9. Uh, general fund revenues, very quick overview. Uh, revenue sources for funds, this again is the appropriation that uh, you'll be asked to approve tonight. As you can see, uh, property taxes represent about $4.6 million of the city's revenues. This is revenues for all funds. Uh, a large portion of that, about 580000 I believe, uh, represents the city approved general obligation bond. So um, adjusted levy increase, okay, our base amount in 2001 was 1528577 uh, Since that time, we've had construction and annex, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, I don't want to misspeak here. The base amount from 2001 to 2012 has increased $1.5 million. Uh, $813,000 of that is representative of uh, construction, new construction, and annexation. The adjusted increase then of actual taxes is 714,000, So the adjusted percent change since that time is 28.5%. The CPI during that same period of time was adjusted 27%. And actual tax increases by the city of Moscow, 27.3. So here the lesson, I guess, to be taken from here is that uh, the tax increases taken by the city have just about mirrored the CPI and national CPI increases. Uh, one of the places we're challenged is building permit revenues. As you can see, they've been on a decline since about 2005 with a 2009 spike caused by the Grove Apartments. But otherwise, it seems like there is a gradual yet significant in, or decrease in building permit revenues. It just mirrors the, uh, the recession that we're going through right now. Um, and, of course, property taxes are fairly flat. We've received some uh, reductions in state revenues. However, those are starting to come back as the economy is starting to rebound a little bit. Excuse me. For some reason, my machine didn't take what I was supposed to be doing here. Thank you. Okay, street fund, street fund revenues and expenditures. Um, this is a special revenue fund, and as you can see, it fluctuates quite a bit. It fluctuates if we have carryover. We perhaps want to do a little bigger project, so we may take some funds for the old street overlay program, carry those over to the following year so we can do a bigger project and thereby take um, – take advantage of some economies of scale. So that's why in some years you see revenues outpacing uh, expenditures. And then, of course, like in 2009, your expenditures actually are more than the revenues because you're actually spending some of the reserve, the carryover from the previous years. Again, as I pointed out in my workshop uh, presentation, these balances at the end are estimates and proposed, so they will balance on all the special revenue funds. Parks and Recreation Fund revenues and expenditures, uh, some of the same discussions. Revenues typically outgrow or outpace expenditures uh, for several reasons, adjustments in the recreation programs, among other things, and then, of course, again, the last two years, estimate and propose. Arts Fund, 
the spike that you see in 2009 isn't that we somehow came into an extra half a million dollars in funding. That actually represents the 1% for arts fund, which the council adopted by ordinance uh, about six or seven years ago. And those funds, of course, 1% of uh, a class most classes of capital improvements funded by the city. Uh, One percent goes into a public art fund. That used to be, Don used to squirrel that away somewhere in the reserve account. Now it's in the arts fund so we can watch that either grow or be expended. Enterprise funds, of course, enterprise funds are those funds which the city runs as a business. So they're supported entirely by fees charged for the services of the funds. Uh, water, sewer, and solid waste comparisons, always an interesting thing to look at. As you see, we've got our two other cities that we compare ourselves to, Coeur d'Alene and Lewiston. Some of these are higher, as you can see. Our sewer, for instance, or excuse me, water fund is higher. We have a uh, conservation program and uh, a lot of other programs that are uh, are not being pursued in Coeur d'Alene. Uh, sewer, which is in the blue. Sewer, our sewer rates are fairly high until you get to some of these smaller towns where they have very few residents who have to pay quite a bit for sewer improvements. Uh, Coeur d'Alene, or excuse me, Deary and Potlatch being the most obvious um, examples of that. Our uh, sewer fund has always, the rate reflects uh, what is necessary to meet our capital, operational, and expansion needs, repair, maintenance, and of course we have regulation from the EPA and DEQ as well. Uh, solid waste fund, uh, we have about the highest rate of solid waste, but uh, the solid, our solid waste rate covers all services uh, affiliated with solid wa waste, whereas you take uh, Coeur d'Alene, for instance, Coeur d'Alene pays a collection fee, separate fees for recycling, that sort of thing, and they also are charged a um, landfill assessment through their property taxes, so it isn't all handled by the city. Okay, water fund highlights, 4% uh, increase in fees pursuant to the 2006 water and sewer rate study, uh, which of course was a citizen committee that made recommendations to the city council on what it would cost uh, to take care of operations, capital, uh, and their, and such uh, expenses to keep the water fund running. Uh, that study is being pursued again as soon as the comprehensive plans are completed for water and sewer, then that study will be undertaken for those uh, enterprise funds again, so we'll be able to remain current. Blue Space and Aquifer Committee is also something we support in the amount of $40,000 per year. Uh, that is for research and administration um, in the region. City of Pullman, WSU, Idaho, University of Idaho, Layton, Whitman Counties, uh, City of Palouse are all members of that. I'm probably missing one or two, but uh, that is a collaborative arrangement. We have a water conservation program. You uh, actually approved uh, the education budget for the water conservation program earlier tonight. Moscow has a very robust uh, water conservation program, uh, tiered rates, and the focus clearly is on preservation of our water resources. Sewer funding capital, uh, the water and sewer rate study recommended a 3.5 increase in fees for this year. Again, same uh, comments regarding the study and it being updated. We in the sewer fund were regulated very heavily by these two entities, uh, IDEQ, the Idaho Department of Environmental Quality, as well as the EPA. Uh, so a lot of the things that we do at the wastewater treatment plant are because of necessity or they are intended to help us meet our permits with the EPA and the regulations of DEQ. We also have bond requirements in the sewer fund. We have some significant revenue bonds outstanding. Um, we have to, within the rate, generate enough funds not only to pay those bonds uh, according to their schedule, but we're also required to have a certain amount of reserve. As we talked about, I think, last week, uh, Moscow has an A-plus rating for our sewer fund, uh, which is really good for a town of our size. And one of the reasons is because the council has approved funding and the rates that will support all of the things necessary to make those bonds a good risk in the market. 